five seasons, an interactive game all set before this show, and finally we've solved Jurassic World Chaos Theory. We have a complete picture of who's behind everything, who's the broker, the mysterious handler of the Atrociraptors, and what season two's timeline and plot will actually be. Not to mention the entire fiasco with Brooklyn. All of this is going to completely change the Jurassic World timeline as we know it. You're not going to want to miss a single bit of this, so strap in, hold on to your butts, and today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, but more on that later. Now it goes without saying that this will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen Jurassic World Chaos Theory, go and watch it and come back to this. Now looking at season one, there are many questions which we already need answers for. The broker, the dinosaur handler, Brooklyn, the overarching story, the dinosaur black market, but don't you worry, I'm going to cover absolutely everything and then even move into season two, because I believe we've solved that already as well. But the one confusing thing here is the timeline, because the show actually says it's set six years after the events of Camp Cretaceous. Camp Cretaceous ends in 2016, placing this new show in 2022. Dominion also starts in 2022, but the confusing thing is, is Chaos Theory set before or after the events of Jurassic World Dominion? While the show's executive producer Scott Creamer says it's set between films, obviously set between the events of Fallen Kingdom and Dominion, but the show itself shows us something different, because if we look in Darius's cabin, he has a calendar on the wall, and the calendar actually shows us that it's in September 2022. This would place it after the events of Dominion, because Dominion takes place in the summer of 2022. Further to this, we also have the issue of the Atrociraptors. We only see three Atrociraptors when we know in Dominion they were four, because in Dominion we see one of the Atrociraptors actually captured. This would make sense why is we only see three then in Chaos Theory. And not to mention, when we see the vehicle they're transported in, in episode five, it actually has four cells slash doors and only three return. Now, either way, I think they intend it to actually be set in 2022, because there's no mention of the fall of Biosen, the Biosen Sanctuary, the conspiracy. So despite us actually seeing dates which contradict the storyline, I believe it is set before the events of Dominion. But the Atrocity Raptor stuff, we'll come back to that later. That will make things a lot more easier in our investigation, because believe you me, the end theory is absolutely wild and potentially will blow your mind, trust me. One thing which is evidently clear throughout the season is the fact that there was an investigation into the Manticorp Island, because we know Bumpy is on the mainland. Sammy actually says that after the Manticorp investigation, they moved Bumpy there to her ranch. And this is where things start to get really interesting, because we know there was an investigation into the island, Bumpy's came from there, but what about the other dinosaurs on Manticorp Island? The Spinoceratops, the Spinosaurus, and the two T-Rexes, Big E.T. and Little E.T. Well, we obviously see Big E.T. at the end, the final episode of Chaos Theory, we see a Rex. Now, it's debated which Rex this is, it's evidently clear which Rex this is, it is Big E.T. You've only got to look at the scars, the coloration, it's 100% clear, the Rex from Manticorp Island, Big E.T. Problem solved. We also see the Baryonyx, taken from the Manticorp Island, but what we don't see? The Spinoceratops and the Spinosaurus, or the fact that who or why they're taking these dinosaurs off of Manticorp Island, and where are they shipping them to? Don't worry, all that will become clear later on, because as you know, the dock we see at the end of Chaos Theory, they're obviously transporting these animals somewhere. The broker is having these animals transported off somewhere. But for me to tell you and explain where they're going to, I'm going to have to fill in all the blanks first. And that, my friends, is where the fun and interesting bits start to come into play here. And let's start with where that ship is actually going. Well, I have 100% proof where that ship is going, and you best brace yourselves. The very last scene in Chaos Theory sees Brooklyn on the phone with one of the rangers. Now, the obvious thing here is the ranger's location is in the daytime, Brooklyn's location is in the nighttime, indicating it'll be the other side of the world. That's one indication of where the boat could be going. And the other source is from a Mattel toy line, which isn't released yet, so I'm not going to show it, but it basically says that Ben finds himself in location in West Africa, indicating that when they get off the boat, they're in West Africa. Problem solved, we know where the boat is heading, and it starts to narrow things down a little bit, but we still still have so many unanswered questions here, such as why is the handler slash atrociraptor woman hunting all the campers? What happened to the other dinosaurs from Manticorp Island? The camp counselors, May Turner, Brooklyn? But whoa, 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 let's slow down and let's rewind a little bit here, and I want to focus on Kenji's father. For me, Kenji's father was a huge thing. I called Kenji's father being the villain in Camp Cretaceous before he even came out, at least 12 months before. So the fact that we see him in Chaos Theory, again, kind of indicated to be the bad guy, given 
Brooklyn money and then trying to manipulate his own son into becoming the new CEO slash face of the company because Daniel himself is obviously crooked, went to jail, no one would invest in him, tries to get Kenji to be the face of the company. And this is where the mega theory starts to come into play. Now, I think Daniel Khan, obviously at the end, he gives his life to save Kenji's. And he talks about like how he was growing plants in the garden, working really hard, and how he's starting this new company. At first, they try and lead us to believe that Kenji's father is still evil, but I don't believe this to be the case. And in fact, I actually believe he was going to be the hero of the franchise. And here is why. We know Brooklyn met with him. Daniel gives Brooklyn a huge sum of money because Darius and Kenji find that money in her apartment, her secret apartment. So why would Daniel be giving her all this money? This then paints a narrative that Daniel and Brooklyn were evil and they were doing evil things with this money. And I don't believe that to be the case. I think Daniel Khan was actually going to try and redeem the Kenji name. As he says, he wants to bring honor, integrity back to the Khan name. How was he going to do that? By saving all the dinosaurs instead. He was going to build a sanctuary, get all the dinosaurs from the black market with Brooklyn's help, set up a new sanctuary for all these dinosaurs with Kenji being the head of this corporation. This corporation to save dinosaurs. He was teaming up with Brooklyn to stop the illegal poaching, to stop the black market and actually buy them dinosaurs himself with Brooklyn's help, bring down the evil corporation and put the dinosaurs in a safe haven. Now I know that's a lot to take in and we've got even more to cover off because there's so much here already. Now the likelihood is he would have fully explained this to Kenji if he wasn't interrupted and killed by the Atrocity Raptors. And this brings us back to the Atrocity Raptors and the Atrocity Raptor Handler. Why would they or she be handling hunting them. We can obviously know why they would potentially be hunting Brooklyn, because Brooklyn is going to expose the illegal dinosaur trade. But why would they hunt the rest of the campers? It would make no sense. Well, thinking back to Camp Cretaceous Season 4 and Season 5, it would make sense, because if this was set before the events of Dominion, we obviously know that Biosen is still operating. Who makes a trip to the Manticorp Island and is seen by one of the campers? That's right, Lewis Dodgson. Lewis Dodgson is actually seen by Kenji himself. And if Brooklyn learns that Lewis Dodson and Biosen are behind all the illegal dinosaur poaching, dinosaur black market to fund their research, she would obviously tell her boyfriend at the time, which is Kenji. And Kenji obviously knows Lewis Dodson by face. Lewis Dodson wouldn't allow this and orders a hit on not only Brooklyn and Kenji, but the remainder of the campers, the inner circle. He's no stranger to ordering hits on anybody. He does this throughout Dominion using Sonya and her atrocity raptor pack. He literally just says on the phone, get rid of them, kill them. That's how ruthless he is. Is. He'd have no problem in ordering a hit on all of the campers. But what this doesn't explain is this strange dinosaur handler woman, where's Sonia Santos? Why is she using a whistle instead of the laser? And what's happened to the other atrocity raptor? Well, we do have an answer why she's using the whistle rather than the laser. Scott Creamer, during an interview, actually said that the whistle is more primitive than the laser, telling us that they were using the whistle before the technical advancements of the laser, showing again that it comes before Dominion. Very similar to how Owen was using the clicker in 2016 with the Raptors. Now let's actually move on to the handler as she's called. She's very robotic, almost as if she's hypnotized, brainwashed even, into doing her master's bidding, or in this case, the broker slash boss's bidding. Now, as we know in Camp Cretaceous Season 4 and 5, they used brain chips on the dinosaurs. These brain chips were actually the reason Lewis Dodgson was on the island. He wanted to purchase that level of control for obviously his dinosaurs in the sanctuary. Now, there's two potential options here for this T-1000 dinosaur woman. It's either A, she has some type of brain control chip herself inserted into her, much like the dinosaurs did. This would then explain her robotic-like nature, her hypnotized state. It's either that or B, she has some type of dinosaur DNA inserted into her. And why would I say this? Well, she seems to have an unearthly bond with the raptors. And what I mean by that is she's able to kind of telepathically communicate because we see in one scene that the raptors kind of know that the campers are in the warehouse. They go up to her. She seemingly looks at the raptor, nods as if she's understanding what the raptor's communicating to her, and all of a sudden orders an attack on the location of the campers, where she doesn't even know where they are. Very suspicious. Especially if she's working for Biosen, who we know already was dabbling in the brain control chips. Either or, she's working for Lewis Dogson, has the chip, or some type of human dinosaur DNA inserted into her. That explains her reason for hunting the campers so viciously. But what has it got to do with West Africa, the broker, what is Brooklyn's involvement? 
moment. Before I get into that, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform which makes it extremely easy to build and manage a website. It has everything you need if you're planning on opening your own dinosaur merch website, launching paleontology courses, or even blog about that time you went hunting for dinosaur fossils. It has everything you need and award-winning templates to help you set everything up, so you can design a website quicker than hatching a dinosaur egg. I can't recommend enough that you start your free trial on the platform today. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com shadows and use code shadows to get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Now, I obviously briefly mentioned the broker earlier on, and a lot of people would be assuming the broker is obviously Lewis Dodson. No, I don't believe the broker to be Lewis Dodson. Lewis Dodson is the overall boss, the entire mastermind. The broker, I think, is someone else. Now, don't get me wrong, it could easily be Lewis Dodson, the one calling the shots, the one to say this, the one to do that, but I don't believe that to be the case. The meaning of a broker is a go-between, a person in between parties. So the fact that they're referred to as the broker means that a person in between that final line of communication, that final boss. The final boss is obviously Lewis Dodson, but the one they're communicating with, the broker, is no other than Brooklyn herself. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's like, whoa, what, what, what? Hear me out here. Brooklyn was deep undercover in this entire black market conspiracy theory, whereas she then takes on the role of this broker, getting all these dinosaurs for her new sanctuary, which she was setting up with Daniel Conn. She was pausing as a broker in the black market to get all these dinosaurs to safety, to this new sanctuary. That was her role. That's why she had all this money, all these emails to all these people buying dinosaurs. She is the broker. That's her. Instead Instead of letting these dinosaurs go off to the black market or Lewis Dodson, she's buying them for her sanctuary, undercover. But what actually happens is she gets found out, hence why there's a hit on her and then all the campers. This then revolves around season 2, season 3, with Brooklyn, the gang and everyone trying to bring down the illegal dinosaur trade, as well as saving all the dinosaurs which are being mistreated. And where is this new sanctuary being set up, you ask? Well, there are two possible explanations and locations for this. One of them you're absolutely going to love. Now, the first one is pretty obvious. They could be setting a sanctuary up in West Africa, although I believe that to be quite difficult. I believe that's going to be the location of a secret hidden black market, so I don't believe that to be the location. But one location I do believe and I love the idea of is that she's setting up the sanctuary on Isla Sauna. I mean, what a great way to tie everything back in. We know Isla Sauna is potentially abandoned. It's a huge island which could support the entire ecosystem itself and would make sense. It would bring things complete circle, turning the dinosaurs to an island. It's either that or they do have a secret facility which Kenji Kong was going to set up in West Africa because we know at this point Biosen is still operating, Biosen Valley is still a thing, so the Biosen Sanctuary doesn't exist yet unless that does come into play when they take down Biosen. Because let's not forget, Darius Bowman could easily go undercover as Ramsey, Ramsey we see in Dominion. They basically have exactly the same hairstyle, could have the same backstory, he could go undercover, Brooklyn could go undercover, but that that is purely speculation and that is just a theory. But either or, I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this. How would we see the camp counselors return? What about the Sinoceratops or even the Spinosaurus? I'll have upcoming videos on them very shortly, so make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell and like the video. I'm Shadows, hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.